For the last week or so, I have been using this. It's the Cube Thinker i35, and it is without a doubt one of the best laptops to come out of China. So it's powered by a Core M3 7Y30. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD. And what sets it apart from the others is the beautiful display it has. So it has a Surface Book 13.5 inch 3000 times 2000 resolution screen and you will see on the side there a familiar looking stylus if you are a Microsoft Surface Pro 4 or Surface Book user. The screen supports the same in trig technology. So not only is it the Surface Book screen, it also has the Surface Book Touch digitizer and stylus tech on there. And we do have down the front here fingerprint security which, by the way, works flawlessly every single time for me. It's very quick to unlock the machine. The laptop has this full metal design. It's very premium, super high quality. I can't really fault it at all. And the hinge on it goes all the way back. Lying almost 180 degrees. Unfortunately, due to the design, I think the feet just aren't high enough. There, as you can see, a little bit of a gap there so it's not lying completely flat but it can be pushed down flat it also has enough ports on there to satisfy most we have a full-size USB 3 port DC in for charging then a USB 3.1 type-c port now this type-c port will support charging data and display out simultaneously as long as you have a hub any proper USB 3.1 hub will work so this all key one that I have charging data display out working the Mi Notebook hub as well. This is the one you just get from Xiaomi. That also works. And then my favorite one, which is the Havit Type-C hub, display out, ports, charging, all working, including the SD card reader. And on the right side of the Thinker i35, we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack that supports microphones. The quality out of this port is very good. It's loud, it's clear, there's no static, there's no interference and a full-sized USB 3 port. Just like the one on the left side, it also powers external hard drives without any problems. The touchpad on the i35 is quite good. It's, I wouldn't say the best touchpad that I have used, but it is a precision touchpad. That means we have full control over it. We can disable gestures, fully customizable under the Windows setting, which is really good. Now it does have incorporated mouse buttons left and right, supports as mentioned, just those gestures there. So if you do find some of those ones annoying, which I do personally, like the swipe down to minimize and maximize, you can go along and disable that. Now the accuracy of it is good. I don't think the touchpad is quite as good as the Mi Notebooks, but it's still one of the better ones I have used and certainly not as good as top end touchpads you'll find on say the MacBook. Now the keyboard I find is quite good. It's decent. It's got 1.4 millimeters of travel. The keys are spaced out well. It's not really a noisy keyboard. Now I do find that compared to the Mi Notebooks keyboard that it's not quite as good to type on. And of course it doesn't have the backlighting in there. There is also no control for the screen brightness, but we do have controls for everything else like media controls, print screen, that all is there at least. So what really makes this notebook is its screen. Uh, sRGB 100% coverage. It is super accurate to touch. It's exactly how I remember it on the Surface Book and my Surface Pro 4, which is, uses similar technology. And of course, you do have the, the stylus. More on that later. But it works exactly the same. So very accurate to touch. One of the best panels I have ever used, I feel, in a notebook. It is just really that good. Maximum brightness comes out at 505 lux, so it's also very bright. And the fact that it's fully laminated, it's not so susceptible to reflections. However, there is a bit of a con having a touch screen in a notebook. Uh, While well, there's two cons, one that it doesn't flip right around to 360 degrees, which is a real shame. Neither does it lie completely 100% flat as you saw in the start. The other thing is too, like look, I can move an icon here, not press too hard and the screen won't really wobble around too much. But if you're someone that's quite heavy handed with touch, then you see this is gonna happen. The screen will bounce and wiggle around a little bit. That can be a little annoying. 
I have accustomed myself to touching it a lot lighter now so it doesn't really do that so I don't have that problem because it is so sensitive you don't need to tap away at it really hard. But I did see even in the press event from Microsoft with the Surface laptop, sorry, uh, laptop, they were holding the screen when they were using the stylus. They were also holding the screen when they were tapping away at it just so it didn't wiggle around. So it comes with an unknown brand SSD, it's SATA 3. I'll show you the speeds of that in just a second. I wanted to point out that Windows is in Chinese on this model when I first got it. So what I did was just decided in the end to completely wipe it out, put a clean install of Windows 10 English in there. That went full to sleep. Most of the drivers are already there because they're pulling through at least the touchscreen and other things from the Microsoft Surface book. But I did encounter a couple of drivers that were missing, but you can use the double driver backup I have on my website for that. So upgrading it, you can actually get a Windows 10 Pro license off eBay for around two to three pounds. Um, OEM ones, they apparently say are legit, but it worked for me and it's working now and I have used it on other systems. Um, if you're not happy with that, of course, you can go to a store and pay a lot more and get a proper key there. So system performance, this is Geekbench 4, the Core M3 7Y30 performs really well here. This is a good score. Not quite as fast as the Cube Mix Plus I looked at, only slightly less. Uh, the pass mark score comes in to be uh, 2130, which isn't bad. And we do have Intel Wireless AC3165 chipset on here. Now there's something a little off here. The download speeds are perfectly fine. Upload, um, I'm not too sure whether it was something to do with my connection at the time. I should actually retest this, but it seems to be maxing out around 5960 megabits on the upload when it should be a lot faster than this. It should really be around 300 as well. So wireless upload speeds, not particularly happy with them. Um, not sure why it's slow. It could be something to do with the antennas. I really haven't had time to look into that in depth, but safe to say that it's not performing as fast as it should on the uploads. Now I also ran Cinebench R15, 31, almost 32 frames per second OpenGL, and then the CPU score of 234. That is a lot faster than the Apollo Lake or the Cherry Trail, the old Atom architecture. The Core M3s I think are quite good, these new ones. And finally, the SSD speeds. So benchmarked it. It's SATA 3. This is perhaps a little bit of a bottleneck compared to more expensive models that have PCIe drives on them. I know if you've got a Samsung 960 Pro in there that it's going to be a lot faster than this. But still, they are decent speeds for a SATA 3 drive. And on to battery life. So it has a 37 watt hour battery in there, just like the Mi Notebook. And unfortunately, battery life is very similar, five and a half to six hours of heavy, well, not heavy use, medium use Chrome. If you stick to using Edge in this test that I did here, then you can expect about seven and a half hours of just browsing. That was with the brightness set to 25%. If you have the brightness set at 100%, then it will really start to chew through that battery. And if you gain 100% brightness, you can probably burn through that whole battery in under three hours so it doesn't really last for too long now charging times i did a test ran it down to seven percent and then to fully charge it took two hours and 44 minutes which i thought was okay not as fast as the me notebook which can charge a lot quicker than that i think that one's close to around two hours to fully charge the me notebook and here are the thermals so i did a thermal mod on this one in the end so what happens is if you're taxing this just the CPU, it will get up to 82 degrees. I decided then to do, I think it was around two hours of gaming. Yes, two hours and 13 minutes gaming non-stop on it just to see how hot I could get it. It got up to 92 degrees when pushing both the CPU and the GPU. Didn't thermal throttle as you can see. Where it says yes along here, that's just your power limits. Now that's normal that the power limit's going to be triggered on a Core M and also the Apollo Lake but at least there was no thermal throttling. My mod, however, has lowered the temperatures, maximum temperatures 25 degrees, and I really do recommend it if you're going to buy this. Now, when I was gaming for two hours, it did get particularly hot around here, so very hot around this area and on the bottom. 
Uh, when I say very hot, it was around 37 degrees. So it's not going to burn you, but it is quite warm to the touch. I did expect this because it's a thin machine. It's fanless. That heat's going to have to dissipate through the metal housing of it. And with my thermal mod, it's actually pushing more of that heat out the bottom of it. So it doesn't seem to get as hot now on the top. But the palm rest will get warm to the touch on the left hand side. But I don't think it's anything. I don't really see it as an issue. It's getting warm, but it's again, it's not going to burn you. So here is a sample from the front facing webcam. It's two megapixels. You can record in 720p max. 30 frames per second and as you can see the quality I find to be really quite good. Normally you don't get this kind of quality, often it's quite grainy. I am of course in good lighting at the moment that has quite an impact on it. If you move into lower light then it gets a little bit more grainy of course. Now the microphones are located either side, there's a tiny bit of static and hiss you can hear in the background. But overall again not bad and typing on the keyboard you can still hear those keys a little bit, but it isn't as bad as ones where the microphone's located next to the keyboard, then it's really loud. So I know there are a lot of you out there that are looking between both of these models. This is the Mi Notebook 12, which has the Core M3 6Y30. Which one would I go for? Well, I've already decided I actually like the Cube Thinker i35 more because of the screen. I like the 3x2 aspect ratio. Now looking at the Mi Notebook, it seems like the screen is just too narrow because I'm so accustomed to looking at 3x2 displays. It's just got a much better display, way better colors, better brightness. Now there are of course some pros of the Mi Notebook. It has a spare PCIe SSD slot so you can upgrade the storage on that one. The keyboard is backlit. It's slightly better keyboard, slightly better touchpad as well. And the battery life on both of them is about the same, five and a half to six hours. It's also cheaper, so if you want to save money then I would go for that one of course. But at the end of the day, if you need eight gigabytes of RAM and more power, this of course is the model to go for. It has double the SSD capacity, double the RAM, about 15 to 20% faster performance as well when looking at benchmarks. And of course it has touch and stylus support. So if you need to have touch and a stylus, then that's the clear one to go for. And the Mi Notebook of course is smaller, you can see. It's also lighter. This one weighs around, just off the top of my head, I think it's about 1.3 kilos. The Think is 1.6, but both of them are very portable machines. And you see the thickness of them. Although the Think is looking a lot slimmer, it actually really isn't when you look at it because they're about the same really. Okay, so just how fast does the notebook feel? It is very quick. It feels almost like a Core i5. I have noticed no problems really. You can push the Core M3s, the new 7Y30 series, and even the old 6Y30 quite hard, doing lots of things. Web browsing performance, of course, is very smooth, very fluid touch, fluid as anything. So I do have Photoshop open here. Now, Photoshop, you can do basic edits. You can actually get away with doing a lot more than you would think. But as soon as you start getting really heavy, large images in there, like 25 megabytes and things, and then start piling on different layers, you will start to see a little bit of slowdown. You can see that's a little bit laggy there. And it is doable, but I would want probably something like an i7 personally, if I was going to be doing lots and lots of work in that. The same goes for Premiere Pro. I was editing a 4K video. Just bring that up now, show you how fast it's going to load in. And I should have uh, a project, I think, that I can open up. So I have two 4K files I was editing, recorded in 60 megabits, megabytes per second, sorry, on my Sony A6300. And the timeline was decently pretty quick, actually. Not too bad. You see, I'm able to scroll around there. Preview that. The same goes just like Photoshop. The more you start to add different transitions, you put more and more clips in there, the slower it will start to become. And it really does have its limits, I think. More limited probably by the RAM use, which... I think is almost filled up. See, I'm at 91% RAM at the moment. Remember, they still do have Photoshop running in the background there. 
So ideally, you would only run, of course, Photoshop or Premiere Pro at not at the same time, just one or the other. So a very quick look now at the stylus performance in Photoshop. So I have the Surface Pen, which is the one that works on it, but Cube, of course, have their own model. But I would get this. The Surface Pen, of course, is the Entrig Pen. It's proven pen. It has the rubber tips on it. And you also have interchangeable nibs. If you're an artist, then you can change the, the style of the tip on there to suit what you're doing. So I'm going to need to do basic stuff here. I am not an artist. I have zero skill. But I'm just going to draw some lines, and we'll see how that performs. Now, it has all the features that you get on the Microsoft product. So what I'm saying there is the button works, okay? And the other end as well works, and you can also click that. It's connected up via Bluetooth, so that brings up Windows Inc. Workspace. Double tapping it will take a screenshot. So that's all working how it should. So just to draw a diagonal line here, you can see there is a little bit of lag there with the pen. But the accuracy and feel of it feels really good to me, just like the I'm using the Surface Book or I'm using a Surface Pro 4 on Sketchpad. So there's obvious cons here that you're going to have to hold the screen, you have to write on it upright. Now you can try to lay it completely flat as I've shown in my stylus preview video that I did. The problem is it doesn't sit completely flat, so it's not a full 180 degrees. The problem is that then when you try to write on it like this, I mean, it is doable, but it just still moves around, which is slightly annoying. So we have pressure sensitivity. We have all of that. The hover feature as well, that's all there. How do you press? The darker that's going to get, that's using the uh, pencil tip there. If one thing I have noticed, I don't think the pressure sensitivity is as accurate as using the proper Microsoft Surface Book or the Surface Pro 4. It's just something I don't have, unfortunately, my Surface Book anymore, so I can't compare them side by side. But I feel it is definitely one of the better performers when it comes to stylus performance, and we do have maybe the second best tech. I do like the Wacom styluses, but this seems to me like almost as good. Now there's also this way, thanks to people's suggestions in the comments of the video that I did just previewing it, that you can reverse the screen around. And what I've done is I'm laying it down, as you can see, and there's the keyboard. But I've pushed that just up right there. And now let's try writing on it, see if it's going to be a little bit better without having the keyboard in the way. We don't have to hold the screen then. Okay, that is a lot better. The palm rejection, as you can see, is working. I can, of course, flip that around, erase what I just wrote there. This works really well, having it like this. Very good. This is, of course, OneNote, so very quick and fast performance in this for handwriting and doing things like that. The performance here, to me, and the rubber tip on it, having the fully laminated screen, seems exactly, well it is the same exact hardware as the Surface Book. And you can hold it like a tablet, but it looks really stupid as you can see. So it has two internal speakers, and as you can hear from that little test that I just gave you then, that it's not really loud enough. And there's a tiny little bit of bass in there. The speaker quality is better than most tablets. I just wish I could get a little bit more volume out of those speakers. Quick look now at gaming performance. This is Grand Theft Auto 5, 800 times 600 on the lowest visual settings, and you're seeing that we're getting decent frame rate here, 30 frames per second, considering how demanding this game is, I think is really good. Aided by the fact we have eight gigabytes of RAM over the other devices I've tested out that only have four, its performance is a lot better. Now, temperatures you can see around 75 degrees maximum. I have done the thermal mod on the system. 
If you haven't done the film mod, then it will get up to around 92 degrees. So it does get very hot around this area. Up to about 38 degrees I've seen it getting. So this performance, I think, is really, really good, considering it's a fanless laptop running a Core M. Now games like Counter-Strike, League of Legends, they are all playable. All you have to do is just tweak the resolution and settings. Of course, you can't run in the native 300, 3000 times 2000 resolution. It's just far too demanding for any game, really. The older titles, perfectly playable. You can do some gaming, as you can see. So to recap here, it's got the Surface Book screen in there, fully laminated, it's powerful, got the Core M37Y30, 8GB of RAM, fast SSD. This I feel is the best notebook out of China yet. I'm absolutely loving using it, mainly because of that screen. It's bright, it's got great colors, it's super responsive, very accurate, and we of course have Surface Pen support on there, which I didn't expect it to support the exact same hardware as the Surface Book, even though it's got the same screen. So typing on the keyboard, the experience on the keyboard is good. It's not the best keyboard in the world. It's not as good as the Mi Notebooks keyboard, but I find it to be perfectly acceptable and fine. The same goes for that trackpad, the touchpad, and the fingerprint reader down here, fingerprint security, it works flawlessly. It unlocks really quick, no problems with that. Okay, charge time, two hours, 40 minutes. I think that's acceptable. Where it really has cons are the ones that you've seen in this video that you can't flip the screen around 360 degrees, which is a shame. If they'd had that, I think they'd sell a lot more of this model. To me, personally, that's not gonna bother me because I wouldn't be using it as a massive 13.5 inch tablet anyway, because I just find it too heavy. The other con, of course, is the speakers, they're not, I wish they were a bit louder. They're just not really loud enough. And it does get hot. So if you are going to, don't get me wrong here, if you're just doing light tasks, it's not going to overheat. It's not going to get really, really hot. But if you intend to game on there, or you're going to be doing things like CAD, AutoCAD, really pushing both GPU and CPU, it's going to need that thermal mod. And that's something that we should never have to do. Despite these cons, Overall, the package, it's premium, the premium screen, the really good build quality. I feel it is a very decent notebook, and I really do like this one. The best yet. Okay, Battery Life also is another thing that could be a bit better, but other Core M's I have tested out, even the Microsoft products, I'm only getting around five and a half to six hours. So sadly, we need larger battery cells in there, of course. Thank you so much for watching this rather lengthy review. And I do hope to catch you back in the channel with more up and coming reviews. Bye for now.